What's up, dudes? I am just getting up. My computer's getting started. Uh, I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> I can't plug my curling iron. So, I'm waiting for my computer to boot up. Um, Spirit said, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, the blooming music scene in the 90s in the Twin Cities. Oh my God. So dudes, I am 49 years old. I'll be 50 on October 14th. And uh, I graduated in 93. So you can kind of, we're doing a little time warp here. All right. I hear, let's do the time warp again. All right, Rocky Horror Picture Show might mean something. So, uh, why why did I leave Uptown? Oh, okay. In the Twin Cities, in the 90s, there was a really impressive, blooming scene of musicians. There's always been a really cool music scene in the Twin Cities. Uh, in the 90s, there was um, a bloom of, of really intelligent rock and rollers uh, around my age. And then at the same time, there was a bloom of really intelligent hip hoppers at the same time. And the cool thing about the Twin Cities is, is these intelligent musicians... Uh, we're not like super stuck up. They were not uh, like, I only play in this genre and everyone else can fuck the, the fuck off. <laughs> it was never like that. There was a lot of intertwining, a lot of mixing, a lot of, uh, and, so, and that's where you, we got uh, First Avenue gave... Uh, the hip hop crew, a fun little playground to play in, a part of their of the club at the time. Upstairs by the bathrooms, <laughs> they called it the VIP room. There was all those hip hop boys who would bring crates of records up stairs <laughs> to DJ, and so um, all these really talented musicians that would kind of go. In, the hip hop scene would go in and out of the rock and roll scene and all that kind of stuff. Lots of collaborations happened. And lots of really excellent musicians came out of that time. At that time, I was living in Uptown, going to a ton of shows. I had worked at a record store. Um, and just music kind of was the scene uh, for me. I lived... 2509 Grand Avenue South <laughs> in Uptown with a house full of BMXer boys. Naughty good boys. <laughs> yeah. And then there was another house down the way filled with a bunch of naughty good girls and boys. <laughs> and we'd go back and forth and, and party and hang out. So if you're local, if you're from the scene, some musicians that are sticking in my head at the time. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So any first names that you may resonate with, I will take the first names I'm about to remember and type them into a search of past readings, do the starseed transmissions, and I'll put them down in the comment section. So if you resonate with any of these first names, make sure to check the comment section. All right, who am I talking about? Well, I hear Chad and Tim Tollefson. I hear Bob Eisenbeis, a bass player might mean something. Bobby Drake, Tad Kubler, Matt Kronk, Jason Clark, BJ Willett, Bruce, The Tate Brothers, Noel and Aaron. Uh, 
Okay, that's the names that Spirit is bringing forth. Now, if you're one of these dudes, what's up, dudes? Super proud of you. Yeah. Everybody from that scene grew up. Uh, a, almost everybody is still playing music. All right. So, we had a lot of bunch of... Okay. So, for example, yeah. Um, Bobby Drake. Bobby Drake. Tag Kubler started off here in the Twin Cities. Now they're rock and roll stars for the band The Hold City. Um, I there was one house party where an ex of mine was shit faced, totally jealous. Uh, picked up a boombox and was gonna chuck it right at my head. Bobby Drake, the drummer from the band The Hold Steady, came out of nowhere, pulled that boombox out of that drunk dude's hand and said, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, he saved my life. Uh, but I also almost killed him. Uh, accidentally. No, just kidding. Uh, I was driving down an alley in our town, gonna pop out onto Lake Street. Driving, yeah, coming out of the alley a little too fast. A BMXer was riding by a little too fast. Boom! We almost hit each other. He skidded out. I slammed on the brakes. We both gave each other a dirty look. Till I realized, oh, it's Bobby. And <laughs> he's like, oh, it's Molly. Well done, my winner. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. See you at the party later tonight. All right, see ya. <laughs> he goes off. So lots of old fun memories with those dudes. Um, so why did I leave Uptown? And for yeah, and a lot of those dudes, those naughty good boys, are now fathers, and a bunch of them are fathers to beautiful, beautiful girls. Oh my God! Yeah, naughty good girls. Oh my God! I can only imagine how these dudes are freaking out at how beautiful their daughters are. <laughs> So we partied quite a bit. Um, we lived in a house in Uptown and it was a triplex. Um, I'm waiting for my, my computer to like finish booting up. It's like doing this weird thing, so story time. Uh, it was a triplex, and we were a bunch of kind of young partiers, didn't know, in our early 20s, didn't know, know much about renter's rights, anything like that, and um, I remember, oh my god, I remember one party, it was so funny, so we would have... I mean, we would party hard. We lived in a party house. People would come in with cases of premium beer, those brown cardboard cases, put them down and sit on it. That was your furniture, <laughs> your own case of beer you brought. And uh, so we were at a house full of people, and we lived in the bottom part of the house. The top part of the house had two apartments, so it was a triplex. And there was this older kind of bitchy girl who lived upstairs. <laughs> and she like always tried to boss us around and shit. <laughs> we were all partying, we had a house full. Now if you've ever hung out with BMXers in their 20s, yeah, a bunch of smart asses. Yeah, and then the other house has a bunch of skateboarders. So we're talking top level, smart people, smart asses. <laughs> she starts having sex, super fucking loud. The bed's banging, boom, 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 above us. We're all like, shit faced. Somebody takes a broom or something, I remember bangs it on the ceiling just to see what they would do. It stops. 
And then like five seconds later, it just starts all again. <laughs> the next day I'm getting ready to go to work and I get out and there's a sign on our door. And I look and it says, listen here, you little shitheads. I will have sex whenever I want with whoever I want, at whatever time I want, as loud as I want. So stop banging on my floor, you little fuckers. Yeah, she was a total bitch. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this note is solid gold. So I, I pulled it off the door, went back into the house and duct taped it to our fridge. So every party after that, anyone who was grabbing a beer out of the fridge got to read that note. <laughs> We were fun. We were crazy. We were silly. And it was it was a really fun time. Just running around the city. Uh, all those musicians were playing shows, playing gigs. All, all, pretty much all of those dudes are still playing music. Uh, and that's just a smattering of the musicians that I mentioned. Those first names might mean something for Starseed Transmissions. Or Spirit is saying, yeah, these people are light workers, and Spirit is acknowledging them and thanking them for their talent. So why did I, why did we leave Uptown? Well, here's where uh, some trauma can come in if you're spectrum -y. So, I want to get, hold on, just one minute, my coffee is done brewing. <laughs> so, I was the only girl kind of in that house and in that, that little scene there. The house that we were living in, we were just living month to month. We didn't really have a lease. The landlord was pretty cool. The house got s sold to the dude who lived in the other apartment upstairs. He was a little older than us, a bartender at, at a club, not First Avenue. And he said, and at the time, we had me in one room, two brothers living in another room. One dude was living in the closet of their bedroom, but Bob, but then he moved. He upgraded to the closet at the other house because it only cost $15 more and it had a window. So he lived in the closet of their bedroom. Then we had three other dudes Dorming it together in the sunroom. So it was a whole handful of dudes in me. And the guy upstairs said, Hey, Molly, I want to take you out to lunch because we need to talk about the future of you and the dudes here at the house. And I said, Okay. And so he said, get in my car, and he drove me to a restaurant called French Meadow. And I just followed him, and we went in, and that was the first time in my life. Okay, so I have some cards here. I'm just going to pop cards and tell this story. It was the first time in my life. I had ever gone out to eat with somebody and they they didn't ask me what I wanted to eat. He just went ahead and ordered an eggplant pizza. And I was like, oh, this is this is kind of weird. I've never been out to eat with someone who says, we're having eggplant pizza, a large eggplant pizza. And I, I had thought to myself, my parents never ate eggplant. So 
To that day, I had never eaten eggplant before. I had never tried it. I had never eaten it. And I'm like, this is kind of weird. This is my card for a social justice warrior. So I'm like, okay, this is a weird dynamic right now. And we're just sitting there. And he says, so we have to talk about your future with the boys. I just bought the house. My plan is to flip it. I'm going to fix it up and flip it. And then he just looked, and then the pizza got delivered. And I remember looking down at the pizza. And I was like, this eggplant looks so weird. I just remember thinking that. And then he said, straight to me. Well, we're going to have to negotiate something for you guys to stay there. I said, okay. He said, if you have sex with me, you and the dudes can stay. If you don't, you're going to have to leave. Uh, and it was like two weeks until the month turned over. You're, you're all going to have to leave in two weeks. And Molly, think really hard about your answer right now because everybody's place to live is reliant on you right now. I was in complete shock. I remember looking at the eggplant and being completely like viscerally grossed out. This dude was gross. There's no way I would ever, I'm not a fucking whore and there's no way I would have ever done that. But I was so young and naive, like now my grown-up self would say, fuck you. Get up and walk out the door. Yeah. But my younger self instantly felt drenched in shame. Somehow I brought this upon all my guy friends. Drenched in shame. And I remember leaning into him, and I was so embarrassed that I whispered, and I said, and I had broken up with my boyfriend, but he didn't know, and I said, I have a boyfriend. And he leaned back in toward me, and he said, your boyfriend doesn't have to know. I remember feeling like I wanted to throw up. He said, think really long and hard, Molly, about your answer right now. Everybody's place to live decides on what you're going to say right now. And I said, I can't do that. And he said, all right, this conversation is over. Can I get a box for this pizza? Put the pizza in the box. Said, get up, Molly. Get in the car. I'm driving you back to the house. You guys have two weeks to leave this house. Dudes, I was so young and naive. I got in his fucking car to drive back to the house. Now, if you are familiar with the Twin Cities, if you're familiar with Minneapolis... French, yeah, if you've, if you've been gone for a while, French Meadow hasn't moved. It's in the same place. So anybody knows that it's not the longest walk. I could have walked back. But I was so trained in following directions. And I had just pissed this dude off. So I got in his car, put on my seatbelt, 
He didn't say a word to me. And we drove three minutes back to the house. He said, tell the dudes you have two weeks and you all are out of here. I was falling apart because I thought this was my fault because I wasn't going to fuck that dude. I went home, I cried. I went in my room and I cried. I was ruining the big fun we were all having in uptown. Now I'm kind of emotional. All these years later. So I called my dad. I was too embarrassed. And that's what's so sad. I feel bad for my younger self. Uh, I was too embarrassed to tell my dad what that dude said to me. And I said, Dad, we need a place to live. And I had a little dachshund wiener dog, Joey. I think Joey is one of them. So it was like, how are we going to find a place to live for a whole bunch of naughty good boys in me and our dog? And my dad, back in the day, my dad was in the car business his whole life. And so he had a lot of, uh, he, my dad used to wear a pinky ring with uh, his initials on it that my mother gave him. And all my friends were like, your dad's in the fucking mafia. I'm like, he's not in the mafia. He's in the car business. He knows a lot of people. So my dad's like, let me make some, some phone calls and I'll get back to you. I'm crying in my pillow. And 20 minutes later, my dad says, I know somebody who has a rental unit in South St. Paul. Y'all can move there. You can bring the dogs. Cost the exact same as the rent you're, pay you're paying right now. My dad did a rescue. Bye-bye, Uptown. Hello, South St. Paul. The place was empty, and the new place, and you can start moving in tomorrow if you want. So I sat down on those boys, told them what happened, said, we're all moving to South St. Paul. Dudes were like, fuck yeah, new adventures in South St. Paul. They were so pissed about what that landlord dude did to me that we started moving the next day we were getting the fuck out of there and one of my roommates Tim I remember we had this nasty package of bratwursts in our refrigerator just imagine a party house with like three month old bratwurst sitting in the back of the very back of the refrigerator. I remember Tim punched a hole in the in the kitchen wall right before we left. It was one of those old houses, I think it's called Lath. And it has those strips and them plaster. And then a hollow wall and then some more strips and plaster. Took out those packages and nasty ass brats. Punched a hole in one side of the wall where the wall was so long and narrow. Took those brats and flung them through the inside of the wall. Clean this up, you perv. Fuck these, you perv. Then we all packed up and left uptown forever and went to forever as all of us the unit and then we moved to South St. Paul and adventures began in South St. Paul 
So, if you are high functioning spectrum E, uh, there is, or if you have a high functioning spectrum E daughter, there is a three times more chance that they will get sexually taken advantage of or sexually abused. So it's very important we teach our daughters how to stand up for themselves. That you can walk the fuck home. You can say, fuck you, no fucking way. You can yell it if you need to. You don't have to follow directions in every instance. So, a funny South St. Paul story. So now we're all in South St. Paul. Living in this weird red house. And Robert Street might mean something, or the name Robert. We're all sitting around. We're having a that 70s show moment, like when they're all in the basement doing the charming situation. And somebody says, hey, did you guys see the new sign at the ground round? If you're not from the United States, if you don't know what the ground round was, the ground round was a cool restaurant when you were a kid. When I was a kid and we went to the freaking ground round, Oh my God, so excited. Yeah, because they served you peanuts. And as a kid, their shtick was, you got a little thing of peanuts at your table. You could open the peanuts up and throw the shells on the ground. You could litter in the middle of the restaurant. Yeah, that was their whole thing. You could eat peanuts and throw the shells on the ground. Yeah, the waitresses would sweep it up. I'm sure they hated that part of the job, but peanuts might mean something. So we were all sitting around laughing. Somebody said, oh my God, did you see the new sign for the ground round? It said, come try our black Angus. Somebody said, dudes. Let's go there and take the G out of Angus. So it says, come try our black anus. Oh my God. We all just like immediately fell over laughing. We're doing it. Somebody had a pickup truck. That I can't, I was so fucked up. I can't remember who was there. I remember we all piled into a pickup truck. We even loaded up uh, a ladder because we were going to climb up to the sign and pull the G out. Just giggling, 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 thinking we were the funniest fucking people ever. So, like, giddy excited with ourselves. Driving out there. We get there. And dudes, somebody already beat us to it. <laughs> it already said, come try our black anus. <laughs> To which we all immediately fell on the floor laughing there on the ground. It was fun times back then. Somebody may be going down memory lane. They may see uh, somebody from their past. They may... Uh, some people may be stuck in a dark night of the soul. Spirit may have sent in... Your divine feminine showgirl from your past life. Come and help ya. And if you spectrum me, and people have tried to take advantage of you sexually, there's something about, um, sometimes people will say, it's the divine feminine showgirls with divine sensuality. These chicks, they got this eat theme can't really put your finger on it, but it's like this it thing. Yeah, it's usually high-functioning spectrum -y girls. Yeah, so just know, if you've lived a life 
Yeah, where people have tried to take advantage of you. If people try to um, touch you, grab you, hold on to you, claim you, uh, use you, it's not you. It's something about the light that you emit. And it's called divine sensuality. It's something that you're born with. And you probably know that. And whatever it is, lower vibrational things get attracted to that. It's kind of like a bubble wrap. You have to pop it. Or the beautiful uh, succulent. Some people just have to stick their fingernail in it. Just a, mm. So just know if any of like what happened to me in that instance, and that's just one instance in many, many instances that has happened to me in my life. Yeah, if that has happened to you, and now I'm almost 50 and just thinking about how scared I was in that moment, how mindfuckery that dude tried to do to manipulate me and, and literally tell me all my friends' futures were on the line right at that moment. Yeah, it's not you. It's those motherfuckers, yeah, who are attracted to your life. Whatever demon was rolling around that dude, yeah, was attracted to my life. And you don't have to, and this is what we have to teach our daughters. It's okay to say no. It's okay to stick up for your fledgling bottom line. You don't have to be a good girl. A lot of spectrum -y people will um, follow rules. They'll do what somebody tells them to do. I don't want anyone mad at me type of thing. So it's very important we teach our children. Yeah, it's okay to say no. And to this day, I still haven't, I still haven't ever ate eggplant. When I look at eggplant, it reminds me of that situation. I have a visceral reaction. And it's interesting how those things all connect. And then the, the last thing is that shame that doused over me was not my shame to carry. As, as a grown-up now, I truly understand. That was that motherfucker's shame to carry. But it instantly doused over me. And I was too ashamed to tell my daddy what happened. And I didn't do anything wrong. I just looked at the timer. It said 333. 3333. Okay, 333 might mean something. So... If you're a musician that ran around the Twin Cities in the 90s, yeah, Spirit says, way to go. Way to go. You are an energy worker, a light worker. You may be existing in the 4D now. You might be getting pulled from the 3D into the 4D. Your talents, your divine knowledge is being called upon. Your light keep doing you however you do you if you're not in a band if you're not doing uh big shows anything like that that doesn't mean you're not completing your mission if you're going to work and you're smiling at somebody if you're saying how's your day today so and so i hear chuck chuck you are sharing your light as a light worker as a lighthouse for people in the dark and if you're suffering privately, if you're going through a dark night of the soul, just know you have your soul family members all around you that spirit is trying to guide you to, 
to get you through this. Because your mind is being called upon for your community and your collective. All right. So I'm going to put some information. Now, don't forget, all of my readings are interactive. This is more of a story time today. Yeah, let's see what past life is telling us. These are messages from the past life. Uh, all of my readings are interactive. So if you haven't checked the comment section of every reading I do, you're missing out on your second half of your message, your transmission, your information spirit's trying to give you. So the second half is down in the comment section of this reading, of every reading. And what that is, I call them starseed transmissions. And so, for example, now I will take Egypt, type it into a search of past readings, and up to the top five most current readings with Egypt in the title, I have over 2,800 readings, will pop up. I'll copy and paste them down in the comment section with Egypt as the keyword. And if you resonate with Egypt, Here's your message. All of my readings are interactive. Hello, darlings. I'm the Supreme Empress High Priestess. Nice to see ya. Okay, final message. So yeah, this, this video originated on YouTube, and that's where you'll find the Starseed Transmission. And if you are going through a dark night, if you're having spiritual depression, if you feel like you're losing your fucking mind, yeah, just know you're going through the cleanse. You may find yourself crying. You may find yourself thinking about traumatic events from when you were younger. And what that is, is spirits clearing out all that negative energy, all that trauma, all that hurt. So I can fill it back in up with the light. I hear now we're back in. Fill it back up with the light. Your soul family will start appearing all around you to help you. And know this, if you're working on self-healing and you're like, not going out to the bar and getting shitty, not doing whatever. If you have this kind of vague kind of FOMO kind of in the background, yeah, know this. There is nothing more important than your mental health. You are not missing out on anything if you are getting yourself well. All right, there's the message, dudes. That's why I left out town. Yeah, but all my, all my dudes came with me. <laughs>